brothers, friends, comrades, thank you for inviting me to address this historic Durham Miners Gala. I consider it one of the greatest honours of my life to be on the stage here in Durham, speaking and sharing experiences with you. We nearly didn't make it this morning because there's been a lot of problems on the trains because we were in a huge hustings last night and meeting in Edinburgh and uh, on the train we were stuck but I had good friends on the train a large delegation of people from Aslef in Scotland so we got a running commentary on what the problem was we negotiated at some length and we concluded that the fundamental problem with the railway system is that it's privatized and our view was that it should be publicly owned and I also think that it is the duty and the responsibility of whoever leads our trade unions and leads the Labour Party to be at the Durham Miners Gala every year to show the importance historically of this event. We were recalling those that passed away during the past year with that very moving tune that we just had from the RMT band. And we think of all those others that died in struggle, in the pits, in pit accidents, and in the brutality of the struggle to get trade union rights, to get recognition, and to get respect for trade unions and their representatives. We also recall those that are old enough, the bitterness of the general strike, and the way in which the mining communities stood together after the general strike. And in standing together, they helped to develop the strengths of the Labour Party, of the trade unions, and of the whole socialist ideal through the grim years of the 1930s. So when we celebrate our National Health Service, when we celebrate the principle of a welfare state, it's on their shoulders that that service was built. It's on their shoulders that the great advances made after the Second World War have grown. We are a struggle of today as well, a struggle for decent wages, a struggle for decent conditions, a struggle for trade union rights. We now have amongst the lowest numbers of people for a very long time in British history and probably amongst the lowest in Europe where workers are covered by collective bargaining agreements. The spiral, the chase downwards, the race to the bottom means that more and more workers are unorganized, zero hours contracts, very little if any pension entitlement and very little security in their lives. The working class of Britain, whether they be in a pit, a factory, a call center, a shop, a restaurant or driving buses, trains or trucks, need trade unions like never before. We need that sense of solidarity of trade unions and on the backs of the work of trade unions over the years not only have we just achieved the National Health Service and the Welfare State we also achieved the Equalities Act, the Human Rights Act and a society where we oppose discrimination, blaming minorities of scapegoating of anybody at any time. There is no way forward of unity in blaming migrants or minorities for the problems of our society. The only way forward is unity in struggle to achieve better conditions for all of us. And the Durham Miners Gala also has a proud record, as indeed does the British trade union movement of international solidarity. So we think today of trade unionists in Colombia in Mexico, in Southern Africa, in Asia, struggling for decency and struggling for conditions. And so when the employers run a race to the bottom all over the world, we, won, we run a race to the top of better wages, better conditions and international solidarity with those struggling for their rights. We are faced with a new threat called the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. Negotiated in secret, between the USA and the European Union. 
Yes, it is a threat to the National Health Service. It's a threat to every other public service. But it's also a threat to every right that's been gained by trade unionists in the USA or anywhere in Europe. Because what it seeks to do, what it wants to do, and what it will try and do is give us the lowest common denominator of environmental regulation, workers' protection, in any kind of rights or regulation on either side of the Atlantic. The parallel experience of the North Atlantic Free Trade Association Agreement has been that uh, North American Free Trade Association Agreement has been deunionization in the United States, mega exploitation in Mexico, and mega profits for the companies that pay ducks and drakes with workers' rights on either side of the border. Stand for something different and something better and oppose TTIP. It's very dangerous for all of us. I want to conclude with this. We all want to live in a society where everybody counts. Where we all care for each other, where everybody cares for every individual. So when we say we defend healthcare as free at the point of use, as a right, we all do. Let us do the same with the principle of the welfare state. It is wrong, it is immoral, it is unnecessary that anyone should be sleeping on the streets of Britain, that any child should be homeless that anyone should be hungry. We are a rich enough country to conquer those inequalities and those miseries. But we have to be proud of our values, proud of our socialism and proud to stand up on those issues. We saw what the Tories are about this week with the budget. An attack on the poor, an attack on young people. And now a two-child policy apparently that the third, fourth, fifth or sixth children in a large family are apparently less valuable than the first or second. I don't know what kind of life the Tory cabinet leads, but as far as I'm concerned, every child matters, every child is valuable, and every child should be treated equally. So that 12 billion cutting benefits is at the expense of the most vulnerable in our societies, is going to make people homeless, is going to drive people out of inner London constituencies like mine. But there's two other points to that budget. One, another cut in corporation tax on the basis that everybody else is cutting corporation tax. The Euro merry-go-round of everybody cutting corporation tax to attract the next multinational corporation into their midst. Surely to God we need unity of democratic governments and democratic society of making sure that they're forced to pay tax wherever they are. And they can't run away to Switzerland to avoid our tax. They can't run away to Monaco, Liechtenstein or anywhere else to pay, our, pay their tax. And they are selling off this year, and I'll finish on this point, 30, get this, 30 billion pounds worth of state assets almost double what Margaret Thatcher sold at the heights of Thatcherite Britain in the 1980s. We need an alternative. We need to say no to austerity that has brought about such grotesque levels of inequality that is freezing public sector wages, leading to a standard of living cut for every public sector worker. We need workers' rights. We need trade union rights that means something in, so our funds are not put under threat and we can take strike action democratically through our union structures. We need collective bargaining, we need an alternative policy. And what's fascinating about this debate in the Labour Party is hundreds if not thousands of people are attending events because they know where we came from and they want to know where we're going to go to. A society of full employment, a society of decency and human rights, a society that condemns and eliminates poverty, both here and elsewhere. It can be done. Thank you very much for inviting me today.